In this little section of videos, I am covering the toolbar, and in this specific episode, I'm going to be covering the ripple and the roll tools. These kind of go hand in hand. These are two different tools that serve two different functions. They're basically trimming tools. I'm going to zoom up on my timeline here, and we are going to choose our ripple tool. Now, our ripple tool shortcut is B, and our roll tool is a shortcut is N. You can see the shortcuts there. They are right next to each other on the keyboard, so they're kind of convenient. You got B for ripple, N for roll tool. I'm not sure where they got those letters from to choose for that, but B and N because they're right next to each other is ripple and roll. So let's talk about the ripple tool first of all. First, let's show what a ripple tool does. Say you want to trim uh, one of these shots here and then you want to fill the gap. I'm going to uh, take this clip's out point. Right now, just keep in mind, I'm on my regular selection tool. I'm not using my ripple yet. I'm going to show you what it does. If I move down here and grab the edge of this edit and trim, and I trim it over to the left and I shorten it, say I like to right there, and now I have this gap here, but I shorten this and I want to fill this gap here, I can select that gap and hit delete or backspace and it uh, deletes that space there and pulls everything else together and pulls everything from this direction down and pulls everything to fill that gap. I'm going to undo that and uh, that is basically what the ripple tool does, and it, but it does it all in one move. I'm going to hit the letter B and select my ripple tool. I'm going to move it down to this edge right here. Notice now it's like a yellow colored arrow that's pointing to this direction to the left, which means it's going to the trim the out point of this clip. It's clip trimming the out point of the clip to the left. If you move it over, it's going to do it to the clip to the right on the end point. But I'm going to grab this clip here, and I'm going to drag to the right, and now I let go right there, and it basically pulled everything else down. It trimmed this clip to the end. It's basically what I just showed you where I cut off that clip or where I trimmed it back and then filled the gap there. It does it all in one move. But it also just doesn't do it in this one direction. It just doesn't trim it. It just doesn't shorten it. It will also lengthen it. So basically, this is what it does. I'm going to hit my All Tracks Forward tool here, click, and I'm going to drag these out further to the right. I just moved everything out because I want to grab this clip here. I hit my Selection tool and drag this out and extended that clip out to the right. That is also what the Ripple Edit tool does. It, I just shoved everything else out and trimmed this clip out uh, to extend this clip. So let's show that in one move here. I'm going to hit B. I'm going to grab this clip. Now I can just drag it to the right as far as I want. Notice what it does up here in my program monitor as I do that. As I grab this clip and I drag it to the right, look at these two images that pop up. It's showing my new out point as I drag that out to the right on the left hand side. And on the right, it shows the in point of the adjacent clip or the next clip. And notice as I move this uh, back and forth, it's just trimming the one to the left and leaving the in point alone. So if I drag it to the right to extend it to where she looks and then let go, it just shoved this video all out right there. And I grab this and drag it to the left. Notice it's trimming that clip's out point. I drag it to right there. It's just shortened it. And notice that in out point. Notice that the in point on the clip on the right stays exactly the same because it's not affecting that clip's in point. It's just doing the. It's just trimming the out point on the right. And I let go, and it does a ripple cut, shrinking that clip back in. If you're going to define the ripple function, it basically trims a clip's in point or out point without affecting the adjacent clips. Now, a roll tool is kind of the opposite here. A roll tool is used for, and I'm going to show you kind of a practical uh, use for the ripple and roll tool here in a bit. But uh, right now, the roll tool, let's talk about that. What the roll tool does is it affects both the in point and out point of a clip simultaneously. It's going to affect the out point and the in point of adjacent clips simultaneously. If I hit my N for my roll tool and I move right here to this edit, and I clip and I drag left or right, it's affecting both these clips simultaneously. Basically what that, that's doing, let me hit my selection tool. I'm going to do this kind of manually here. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to trim it to the right. Then I'm going to come over here and grab this and trim it to the left to extend it. I didn't delete that area in the middle. I extended this out point. And uh, that's basically what a roll tool does. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to select my roll tool here, N. I'm going to move this on the middle and watch this as I grab this and drag it to the right. It extended this clip while shrinking this adjacent clip. And as I grab this and drag it to the left, it um, trimmed this clip in while extending this clip here. So it affects both clips at the same time, the in and the out point uh, simultaneously. And up here, you'll notice that reflected in this window. As I grab this in this trim window, as I start moving it, notice the out point of the left clip is extending and the in point of the next clip is shrinking there. As I drag it back and forth here, you can see that happening there and it's changing both the in and out point of that clip and changing the pacing of the edit. 
let's show some practical uses of the Ripple and Roll tool. And what I will often say about the uh, Ripple tool is it is a good matching tool. And once you've made a match between two clips, the Roll tool is an excellent tool to decide where you want the edit to occur once you've matched. And it, should, and it usually maintains matching for the most part as long as the actors as long as the actors acted acted a scene out at the same pacing. So I'm going to go over here to my my bin here and look at some clips. I'm going to grab a wide shot to start with on this scene. I'm going to double click on this clip and find a good portion for this scene to start. I'm going to hit end point where the guy starts to walk into the room. Well, you don't look any the worse for wear. And then the lady walks in here. And she does a little sigh before, like right when she leans against the wall. Let's play. I'm getting along. Okay, let's say we want to cut to a medium shot right there. So I'm going to have her sigh, out point, and I'm going to drop that into my timeline. So I've got an in point, out point, I'm going to hit period and drop it into my timeline, and I've got that clip in my timeline. I'm going to find her medium shot. I'm going to find that same part where she leans against the wall. Where? Right there. And I'm going to put an in point kind of on the fly there. Hit I for endpoint. She says her line. I'm getting along. You know me. How about you? How you been? Out point and period and drop that in. So now we've got this clip here where she walks in. Where? And she leans and does her sigh, but notice I kind of mismatched that. This is a rough cut, basically. So I put the two clips in sequence in the timeline that I want, but now I'm going to use my ripple tool to match that because she sighs once, ignore the color correction because that needs to be done later, but here it goes. And she kind of sighs twice. So what I'm gonna use is my ripple tool to find a matching point. I'm gonna zoom up here on my timeline. I'm going to hit B for my ripple tool. I'm going to grab the out point of this clip here to the left and I'm going to drag it. I'm gonna find a, a good visual matching point. So I'm gonna drag it back to the right and find right, maybe right where she starts to rotate, right there. And let's see if we can get this to match, right there where she starts to rotate. So I've got my out point set where she starts to rotate. I'm going to grab the in point of my next clip here with my ripple tool and I'm going to drag it to the right and see if we can kind of find that same point right where she rotates and right there looks like it might be matched. So I drag this back and look at that because you even have these two matching frames here that you can get your actor to kind of match the position. And I'm going to let go and let's see if it matches. Okay, that does match, but I don't like where the edit occurs. So now I'm going to use my roll edit tool and I'm going to to decide where the edit actually happened. I'm going to hit N for my roll tool, and I'm going to grab this edit right here, but I don't want to edit the audio necessarily. I'm just going to edit the video on this, just so I change the visual where the visual edit happens. Now that it's matched, I'm going to actually lock my audio track. I'm going to grab this clip and drag it to the right. And see, after that camera pan, I kind of want it maybe right where she's leaning and settled into the wall right there. So now it's matched, but now I decided to have the edit happen a little bit later, and this is called a J cut, by the way. Uh, so where the audio extends over into the previous clip. So let's play through that. You don't look any the worse for wear. I'm getting along. Okay, and that worked there. Could use a little tightening up, but that's for the most part matches really well. So I use the ripple tool to match, and I use the roll tool to decide where the edit actually happens after it's been matched. Okay, the next episode I will be covering the rate stretch tool.